Quite a lot is known about the uh, extrinsic muscles of, of the foot. Primarily those are the ones in the calf uh, and they have some long tendons going down into the foot. They've been well researched over many years because they're very easily sort of measured because they're quite uh, easy to get to. Intrinsic muscles, much more difficult to get to uh, because of their location within the foot, uh, have been overlooked for many years, uh, although there is some historical research there. So the uh, intrinsic muscles that we're interested in, even though there's quite a few of them, are the three of the larger ones, which is abductor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum brevis, and quadratus plantae. Those are more easily um, seen in terms of putting our intramuscular electromyographic uh, recordings from, uh, and also we can use some visualization using ultrasound there. So that's been our primary purpose. These muscles we consider are very important, probably in stabilizing the arch and providing some kind of stiffness uh, in, in the arch. A lot of work has been done around some of the passive structures in the arch, so the plantar fascia which basically spans across the arch, and that's a passive structure which basically deforms as you load the arch, it sort of uh, compresses and, and lengthens. Um, so very little has been known about the muscles, and we think the muscles sort of contribute also to this function. Uh, they activate a little later in, in the case uh, than what the passive structures are doing, but they are there to support those passive elements uh, to maintain sort of a, a conformity of, of the arch. With some of those simple measurements we did around postural loading, just standing and adding weight onto people, the muscles became more active. So we knew they were load dependent. Uh, but of course, in running and walking, the load is much more transitory during particularly the stance phases. And so we were expecting they would also be, be active during these periods, particularly as the loadings become much larger than what you have during, during just quiet standing. Uh, the surprise what a little bit was for us that in fact these muscles um, come on all very simultaneously uh, and also that in fact that they are uh, coming on a little later in loading so it takes a little while for a force to be applied to the foot before they activate so we think the passive structures are the, are the initial structures taking on that loading followed by the uh, muscle activity and the faster you run uh, this seems to be coming they come on a little bit earlier uh, in terms of that loading. So, so a lot of work has been done on, on shod versus unshod or, or barefoot running uh, and uh, it's always very hard to tease out differences here between those because they often result in a slightly different change of, of running technique when you go from shoes to, to um, running in bare feet. Our assumption was in fact that running barefoot would have greater muscle activity to support the arch because the shoe wasn't there to support the foot. Uh, we were quite surprised, in fact, that the results were quite different to that. So the shoe itself added some level of compliance or softness into the whole leg spring system. And so we believe now that these intrinsic muscles, in fact, activated more when we were running in a shod condition than the unshod to actually stiffen the foot uh, as a result of this increased compliance in the shoe. So the results were really quite uh, surprising to us in, in many respects. But in fact, they do make sense uh, if we think of the whole leg uh, and I mean then the, the hip, knee, ankle and foot as a, a spring that's required to maintain a constant spring stiffness, particularly if we're running at a, a constant speed.